I wanted to ask um, Daniel, who works for the Cato Institute. I think the Cato Institute is one of the, you will say what it is, um, Dan, I think it's one of the oldest um, and substantial think tanks in Washington. Um, and since Dan was going to be here, I said, you know, never let a, an opportunity go to waste. I wanted to talk a little bit about what a think tank does. Um, don't tell us how expensive it is, just <laughs> tell us what it does. And you probably wonder where the devil is he going with that. I believe that the, if we are going to remain competitive, we've got to have some entities that think outside of the box to help government, whether it's government's policy or private sector initiatives and what have you. And I think that can sometimes probably can best be done in, in a think tank environment. We've had lots of discussions here about is there a need for an entity, thousands of them all over the world. I don't think there's any in the Caribbean actually. Singapore has quite a few and very good ones. Hong Kong, with Carson's help, I've been able to see some in Hong Kong. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I just wanted to use the fact that we had um, Danny here to talk a little bit about think tanks and what they're doing beyond people in one administration coming out and holding patent there until the next time they, they can go into government. Dan? All right, well, th thank you, Russell. Um, boy, people in the U.S. aren't interested in hearing about think tanks, and now you're here listening to me talk about American think tanks, so this must be real torture. Uh, but, but I do think they have a value. Uh, here's the challenge. Just like there are economies of scale for things like infrastructure that, that uh, are difficult for a small jurisdiction like BVI, there are going to be economies of scale with think tanks. It costs money to have a think tank. The budget of the Cato Institute is more than $20 million a year. But we're drawing that from a population of 330 million uh, with a country that has a GDP of about $19 uh, trillion and net wealth of probably uh, $60 trillion. Uh, so when you're the BVI, even though you probably have greater issues to deal with, I'm just thinking uh, of what I, have to, what I witness in terms of uh, international bureaucracies threatening your jurisdiction, uh, you have great need for it, but it's going to be a challenge. Now, there are certain things that are, I guess you would call them substitutes for think tanks, uh, trade associations. So something like BVI Finance will play some of the role of what a think tank does. It will provide analysis and give analysis uh, and generate analysis for government. Uh, this conference, uh, in effect, does something that a think tank does. It gets people thinking about different issues, it shares information, it educates an audience. Uh, but you have a problem. Uh, it's not a problem, but it's a limitation. Uh, BVI finance will be seen as representing the finance industry of BVI. Now, that's a good thing, by the way. Uh, but when you look at, say, the Chamber of Commerce in the United States, it is perceived as having a specific angle or agenda. Now, I think in general, it's a good agenda, just like I would think any kind of agenda that BVI finance would come up with is a good agenda. But some people will automatically say, I'm not sure I want to listen to you because you have a point of view already. Well, of course, that's the whole point of a think tank or a think tank type substitute is to have a point of view. Uh, now, if you create a broad-based think tank, which again, how do you do that with the economies of scale? That that's going to be your number one challenge. If you do it, um, in theory, the advantage it has is that it exists solely to try to promote good policy. Now, in reality, in Washington, when I go into a politician representing the Cato Institute, they know I have a libertarian point of view. And if somebody from the Brookings Institution goes in to talk to that politician, they know their point of view is more on the left. So even if you create a think tank uh, that is not connected with a specific industry, uh, sooner or later, politicians are going to decide, well, you represent this point of view, which is exactly what, of course, they think about BVI finance and any other type of, uh, of group. I, I assume there's a, uh, there must be a tourist uh, uh, industry association here and, and things like that. Now, I will say, and I, because I don't want to go on too long about this, just in case anybody has a question or two, if you're really that masochistic, uh, I will say that having been now to this conference twice and knowing the size of BVI and having been uh, also somewhat deeply involved with a lot of the other Caribbean jurisdictions that have been persecuted by the OECD, I think BVI is ahead of the game. 
Uh, the only jurisdictions that I think rival BVI in terms of the sophistication uh, of public policy understanding, I think, would be Bermuda and Cayman. And those are very wealthy jurisdictions, uh, and, and so I guess it's kind of understandable that they would have a lot of knowledge. But just being at this conference twice, uh, and also having been down there a couple of other times on OECD-related work, I think BVI starts out ahead of a lot of your competitors. Uh, and so if there is some ability uh, to actually take the kind of interest, I mean, you know, y'all are taking a day, and the audience hasn't really shrunk over the day. In most places, the audience would only be, a, you know, one-third to one-half the size it started when you get to the end of a, of a day. So I think there's, there's a, what I would call human capital here that can, that can be utilized, should be utilized, uh, because as you've heard all day at this conference, there are some real challenges. So think tank type stuff sounds boring, it sounds wonky. To a lot of people, it actually is boring and wonky. But at the end of the day, the decisions that governments make are tremendously important uh, for all your lives. And it doesn't matter whether you're in the medical field, the tourism field, the financial services field, uh, communications field. Uh, if BVI is going to be an attractive jurisdiction, given the challenges that you're going to continue to face from international bureaucracies in high tax countries, I think some sort of activity uh, that uh, at least mimics what a conventional think tank does uh, would be very, very valuable uh, for BVI. Uh, and so with that, uh, I think that is probably a, a good introduction to the types of things we do. I again, it's simply writing analysis and then actually going to the politicians and telling them you know, what we did, why we did it, what the findings were. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's marketing ideas. That's what it's fundamentally uh, all about. And, uh, and over time, you have to be credible, otherwise people will stop listening to you. So being careful uh, is probably the number one piece of advice if such a think tank type operation uh, is to be created here in BVI. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Good.